Mr. Speaker, each year that this Premier has been Premier, the net debt of this province has increased by between $900 million and $2 billion. This year, the net debt is projected to increase by $1.65 billion. This is the second largest amount in the history of our province. It is second only to the net debt increase in the year of the 2011 flood. Mr. Speaker, I ask the Premier, why does he want to be responsible for overseeing the largest increases in the net debt in the history of our province? Speaker, uh, we had the largest decreases in the net debt when I was the Minister of Finance, and during the difficult times, we've made investments that will grow the Manitoba economy. Mr. Speaker, last year, from 99 to our assets have increased by $12 billion. The member likes to talk about the debt on the one hand, but he doesn't like to talk about the fact we have more schools, we have more hospitals, we have more personal care homes, we have better flood protection for the city of Winnipeg and the city of Brandon, and we're working on better flood protection for the people of Lake Manitoba and Lake St. Martin. Those assets make a difference. Highways make a difference. The highway investment from Winnipeg to Brandon, over $200 million, has made a gigantic difference in the ability of those people and those businesses to move back and forth there, Mr. Speaker. Our debt servicing costs are half of what they were when the members' office that were in office. Our assets are up, our economy is stronger, more people are working, and the member opposite hasn't a clue what he's talking about. Mr. Speaker, uh, it's the Premier who has a problem with clues. The projected increase in the net debt is much greater than can be accounted for by the size of the annual deficit. The budget shows that a major reason is that the Premier is actually borrowing money for much of the new core infrastructure spending, even as he tells Manitobans erroneously that he's using the money from the PST increase to finance the core infrastructure. In fact, because he borrows money for infrastructure, much of the money raised by increasing the PST is spent elsewhere. Exactly. I ask the Premier, why is he so unable to actually do what he says he will do? Speaker, uh, we will spend about $1.3 billion here, here. on infrastructure this year. Right. It's projected to generate about 12,000 jobs in the province of Manitoba. And that will make an enormous difference in our ability to not only to have good jobs for young people right now, but to have a prosperous province for the future. Those assets will allow Centreport, for example, to have better access to our major export market, the United States, through Highway 75, where we've committed to an over $200 million investment to improve the bridges and the flood protection around Morris, Manitoba. Highway number one has been improved dramatically from here to the Saskatchewan border. Now we're improving highway number one east to the Ontario border. We're building roads in northern Manitoba, an area where the members opposite said they wouldn't build any roads in the future. They said they would actually take the money out of northern Manitoba and put it elsewhere. We're investing in southwestern Manitoba on rebuilding roads and bridges as a result of the flood that's occurred there in 2011 and 2014. These investments are making a very significant difference in the province of Manitoba, Mr. Speaker, and our revenues are there to support those investments as we go forward. Mr. Speaker, sadly, the Premier has lost all oh, no. credibility. The sleight of hand the Premier used to get money for infrastructure is not a magic show that Manitobans uh, find entertaining. What was notable in the budget yesterday Looking beyond the deceptive and expensive messaging of today's NDP spinners was a lack of discussion of where the Premier will save dollars. Oh. It is the budget of a government which has long lost its balance and its focus. It's a strange thought for them. I asked the Premier why did he take such an unbalanced approach, focusing almost all his efforts on spending and virtually none on saving. Uh, the members opposite will know that they had 13 RHAs with lots of administration associated right. with that. We now have five. The difference, the savings, the savings that have come out of those. I know it's upsetting for them. They were the bureaucracy creators. We're the bureaucracy cutters, Mr. Speaker. We took the savings out of the RHA uh, shrinkage from 13 to five. 
and we put it into free cancer care drugs for Manitobans that were not in hospitals, so they could stay at home with their families, so they could continue in the workforce. Why do the members opposite vote against that, Mr. Speaker? We took two crown corporations, liquor and lotteries, and we merged them together. We saved about $3 million a year in administration. Those those savings go directly back into supporting health care and education, Mr. Speaker. We worked with municipalities to reduce the number of municipalities so they would have deeper, broader tax bases, broader tax bases, a greater population base, and be able to respond to the needs of their constituents more effectively. We used to have 57 school divisions. Now we have about 37 school divisions, Mr. Speaker. All of these measures are intended to reduce uh, the overhead costs of government and make sure frontline services are protected. And every time we do that, the members opposite vote against it, Mr. Speaker.